Awesome. Yay. Thank you everyone for putting where you're from in the chat. We have 46 people on right now, which is pretty incredible. Um, we're very happy you're all here. Those of you who are indigenous um, and learning about this medicine, especially, we are grateful for your presence today. So cool. I think with that, it's almost, oh, my computer says it's 310. I think it's probably safe to do some introductions um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. So, hey everybody, my name, uh, if you missed it, is Rachel. Um, I am the food, the, I just changed jobs. I am the farm incubator coordinator uh, for Four Directions Development. And we are putting on um, a series this winter that is just for the community, uh, particularly those here in Red Lake where we are located. We're a indigenous led nonprofit. But also we wanted to share all the wisdom. There's no reason to not put it out on the on the interwebs and let everybody learn while we learn. Um, and we want to focus on food is medicine because I think that we all can acknowledge that we get told no a lot when it comes to food. We get told, don't eat this. This is bad for you. No, 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 no. And there's not a lot of celebration of food as medicine, as you know, we need food. Carbs are good for you, you know, in, in the right ways and doing things in the good way. Um, and so this is just going to be an example of that. And we are super blessed to have Linda Black Elk with us. And she is a very well-known uh, forager and ethnobotanist. And uh, I can't give her all, I can't give all of her credentials. So I'll let her introduce herself. And she's going to lead us through uh, blueberry cedar cough syrup. And then um, I just wanted to put out that there is another workshop coming up. Um, I don't have the flyer for it, but it's going to be in January. So keep an eye out for that. We're going to be making teas. Um, I'll, I can put a shout out for that at the end of the class. All right, Linda, if you would like to take it away. Sure, sure. Hi, everybody. Um, so, so honored um, to be here with you guys today. Um, I am Linda Black Elk. I'm the Food Sovereignty Coordinator at United Tribes Technical College up here uh, in Bismarck and Mandan, North Dakota. Um, this is the traditional homelands of the Ocheti Shakoi and the Mandan and the Hidatsa and the Rikara peoples. And I'm so happy to be here um, and so honored to be on their homelands. Um, and honored to have my Lakota family here with me right now in this room. And I see some of my siblings um, on, uh, on the participant list today. Thanks for being here, guys. Um, uh, so happy to see some of my Ojibwe relatives on here as well. Um, it's always so encouraging and so uh, amazing to, to see you guys on here. <laughs> supporting and, and just uh, being here to learn with me. Because I know very often I learn um, just as much from you all as, as you learn from me. So um, just a, a really beautiful day. It's really cold here right now. And I always think it's so hard to like, on days like this, I just, I, I sometimes I don't even want to be on Zoom, right? I just want to be, have a blanket and some, you know, tea and uh, watching some movies and things like that. Um, but uh, I, I always um, said that I need to learn to cross country ski so that I can get exercise in this weather, but it always feels really cold to get out there. <laughs> but um, yeah, so thanks for being here, you guys. Um, I wanted to make some cedar blueberry cough syrup with you guys today, and I'll talk about why I choose both of those plants for making cough syrup. It, if you can boil water, you can make this cough syrup. Okay, it is the easiest thing in the world. Um, it's definitely not something that you need to overcomplicate. Um, and I hope that you guys will see that as we as we start making it. Um, it's it's really and you can even make it your own. If you don't have any um, blueberries, please please use something else. You know, maybe you have some elderberries. Maybe you even have um, some raspberries which are beautiful medicine as well. It's so interesting to me, right? Because a lot of you guys have heard me say this. We don't think of things like blueberries as being medicine. We think of them as 
food. We think of them as a culinary ingredient. But, um, you know, as a lot of us on here are always saying, food is medicine. And we can't forget about the incredible medicinal properties of, of these. Now, for my um, friends who don't live in, you know, Minnesota and Wisconsin and places where you get plenty of gorgeous wild blueberries, I wanted to just put a little plug in and say, please don't support companies um, like Driscoll's that basically torture their employees. Um, they use migrant labor. They don't feed them very well. Um, they don't pay them hardly at all. And so Driscoll's blueberries um, are being boycotted by a lot of migrant farm worker organizations. And so I just wanted to say that if you have to get your blueberries from the store, try to not support Driscoll's. Um, and, and I want to say thank you to my um, Anishinaabe relatives who uh, always keep me well stocked in frozen wild blueberries <laughs> as well. Um, so if you have a question, thank you, James. Yeah, me neither. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to monitor that as much as possible. Um, and I'll try to uh, get to questions at the end. Already, um, uh, Allison, I, I believe it was someone named Allison, um, asked if we're using spring cedar or um, cedar harvested at another time. I actually have um, fresh cedar here that a friend picked for me. When I love using fresh cedar, but we do uh, tend to harvest cedar in the springtime um, more than we do other times of year. You know, it, it depends on who you talk to, right? Because I know a lot of people who actually prefer harvesting their cedar in the fall. And they say, oh, the plant, you know, um, uh, is stronger in the fall. I find that it's definitely stronger in the spring, um, but that's totally up to you. So um, I, I'm gonna share my screen with y'all here. Uh, and if you have, um, so I'll be showing some names in um, uh, Ojibwe and Dakota. If you have um, n other names and you know the names for uh, any of the plants that we talk about today in your language, I would love to hear them. Um, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, you can definitely use choke cherries. I actually make choke cherry cedar cough syrup um, because that's what we have out here. But uh, I'm teaching this for my friends up on Red Lake who have an abundance of blueberries, beautiful blueberries, um, which are very, very important to them there. So I wanted to use blueberries uh, for this. And I'll talk about how incredibly medicinal blueberries are here in a second and, and why I love to use them. So let me just start at the beginning um, of this presentation here. Sometimes it takes a second to load up. I apologize for that. But um, so uh, today, I, I just want to reiterate, if you have any kind of berry and honey and cedar, you can make this along with us today, okay? And if you have the ability to boil water, okay, you, you can make this with us today. It's that simple. Um, so I hope that you guys will, will join in or uh, you can use your phone, just, just so you know, because I know a lot of times it's tough. Um, I, I, I can send this PowerPoint to Rachel and she can email it out, but I wanted to say that if you want to use your phone to take pictures of the screen so that you have the recipe or any of the information, you can absolutely feel free to do that. So let's talk about cedar for just a second. Um, actually, you know what? I wanted to go ahead and get my water boiling. So um, I, have, I have a hot plate right here and I'm just going to put my teapot onto my hot plate and get that boiling up so I can be ready for you guys. Um, and so we can go ahead and get started making our cough syrup. But I also want to talk to you about cedar a little bit. Um, cedar, okay, I want to make sure that I see this. Um, cedar is uh, of course an evergreen and um, there are two primary species that grow in what's now the United States and Canada, um, Canada. Canada. Um, <laughs> so the Thuja plicata that you see there on the left is um, mostly found up in the Northwest. 
the Northwest uh, of what's now United States and Canada, um, indigenous lands up there. And one way that you can differentiate between that and the type that grows where you guys are at up in Minnesota, um, uh, and, and that's Thuja occidentalis, is by the, look here where I'm pointing. Do you see how this kind of has some white markings? Some people even say it looks like a butterfly. Do you see this? It kind of looks like a white butterfly on the back of the leaf. And I always find that the leaf is just a bit shinier than the cedar that we find over here in Minnesota. You can see a nice side-by-side -side comparison here, okay? So this is Thuja placata in the Northwest, and this is Thuja occidentalis, which is uh, more around where we live in, in Minnesota, Wisconsin, um, areas like that. Um, and then of course, further down south. Now, I actually do find a lot of cedar right here in the Dakotas where I live. Can you guys guess why it's here? <laughs> because it makes a beautiful ornamental shrub. And there are other species out there that, that are planted in people's yards. Um, where I teach at, at um, uh, United Tribes Technical College, we've actually planted a lot of um, Eastern cedar, Thuja occidentalis, uh, because it's beautiful and it's uh, used to our temperatures and things like that. You know, of course it gets very, very cold here. So, um, uh, so I, I do have access to that and that's actually where I got this. So um, now I want to clarify something. I don't think anyone has asked, but I want to clarify something. Have you guys ever heard of like Eastern red cedar, right? You've heard that term before, Eastern red cedar. If you hear red cedar, they're actually referring to a type of juniper right which has kind of the spiky it doesn't have the flat leaves like a lot of people call this what we're using today they call it flat cedar because the leaves are flat and then the the juniper they call it red cedar it's the reason why english names for plants are not really reliable right <laughs> so if you've ever wondered like why you know eastern red cedar uh, why is that called a cedar? It doesn't look like cedar. Well, technically, it's not a cedar. It's a juniper, okay? And it's in a totally different uh, genus. It's juniperous, right? So instead of thuja, it's juniperous. Um, so instead of cedar, it's juniper. Why they call it eastern red cedar, I'm not quite sure. Just those weird English names for plants. And of course, you can see I tried to use the Ojibwe and uh, Dakota names. Um, Hante is the Dakota word and Gijik is the um, Ojibwe word. Uh, so James is asking if this would tr traditionally be made at the same time as the blueberry harvest. Absolutely. Um, now, among the people that I know and my friends. Um, so uh, this recipe is based on a recipe uh, that was told to me uh, by an elder on Mille Lacs. She, um, and she would just more... Um, she said it was more of a tea that used blueberries and cedar. Um, she, uh, she's actually taken her journey now, but um, uh, she, when she was telling me about this, she was talking about how good and soothing blueberries are for, you know, your throat and your lungs, and they are. And um, cedar, of course, is, it's, is just an amazing medicine. Um, now, I want to also talk about the fact that Cedar and juniper actually both have a compound in them called thujone. Okay, can we talk about that for just a second? Did someone here mention that? Is that what I'm seeing here? That someone mentioned thujone? Um, may maybe not. It's it's hard for me to go back up um, to look at the chat. So I, uh, Rachel, you're welcome to, you know, read these. Oh, oh, so Ray is saying that up on the East Coast, there's also uh, Cam, uh, Came Cy uh, Cyprus, Thy Thyoides, Thyoides, yep. Yeah, the white cedars, which aren't really technically cedars, right? I guess, I mean, they're very closely related, but um, different, right? That's a different, um, plant with different medicine. That actually contains, uh, that uh, genus and contains thujone as well, okay? So in the chat, I'm gonna put a word, just so you guys know how to spell it and what I'm talking about, I capitalized it there. Thujone, okay? That's a compound that's in cedar. 
and some people are very sensitive to it. And it can actually, and for some people who are very sensitive, it can make them sick and even hurt their kidneys. Okay. Now, if you have ever been someone who drank a few cups of cedar tea and you ended up feeling really sick and sluggish or, you know, as, as is the case for, um, I, you know, I will be, I'll tell you guys, I've never met a native person, an indigenous person uh, for, to North America who had this problem. But that doesn't mean that you're not sensitive to Thujone, okay? But I want to tell you guys that I usually do not personally drink more than one cup of cedar tea per day, just be in case I might be sensitive to Thujone, okay? Just because it can um, cause some uh, damage to your kidneys, okay? And some people are more sensitive than others. I mean, you could be like my uncle, Les Ducheneau, and he drinks like half a gallon of cedar tea every day. And when I tell him, like, some people are sensitive, he's like, well, I'm not, you know, <laughs> you know yourself, you know your body. Uh, but I just want to make sure that, that, you know, to say that. The other thing I want to say as far as cautions go is that um, cedar uh, has been used to cause uterine contractions and to help to um, make labor uh, stronger so that a woman can have a baby. So I do not recommend cedar for pregnant women, okay? Which means I don't recommend this cough syrup for pregnant women, okay? Uh, now, I have always um, been told that it is safe for nursing women, okay? Uh, and, and I've also been told that Thujone doesn't really pass through breast milk, but I don't have any data on that, okay? So um, for pregnant women, uh, I don't give it to pregnant women, but for nursing mothers, um, that's, you know, that uh, can be your decision, okay? All right, so um, I also want to talk a little bit, oh, I, I, let, me, let me just say, so cedar isn't just amazing for coughs, right? Cedar is actually fantastic for lung health in general. If you are sensitive to thujone, you can actually put a really nice pot, like a kettle of boiling water on the stove, put some cedar in there and boil the cedar and let that beautiful essential oil get into the air. And it actually does help to clear the air. It helps to clear out sinuses um, and it does help with lungs. And that actually is safe for pregnant and nursing mothers. Okay, so um, you can, you know, you can still use it that way. That's not necessarily taking it internally. Okay, so it is great lung support. And I've been using cedar throughout the whole COVID-19 pandemic. I even put some into my elderberry elixir, right? And really, if we're, if we're really thinking about it today, this cough syrup is similar to, to elderberry elixir. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So actually, so uh, Rachel is asking if Thujone is in sumac. Um, I actually don't know. I don't think it is, but, but I'm not 100% sure, okay? Um, you can use the cedar seeds, like the little cones and seeds. That's totally fine. Um, and you can use juniper. I make a lot of juniper cough syrup as well because I love the juniper berries, the, the little blue berries. I know some of you are probably botanists and you're like, technically those aren't berries. No, technically even those little blue juniper berries are, are cones um, and you can use those as well. And I love them. I think that they're wonderful. Um, Athena is asking if non-indigenous thujas or non-indigenous cedars can be used. Yes, they can, but I want you to be careful because there are a couple of species that actually have a really high Thujon content. Um, I can't even remember the name of it off the top of my head. Let me just see if I can uh, find it real quick. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but there is um, a, a type of cedar that has very high Thujon content and has been known actually to cause some kidney issues. So I like to stick with the indigenous ones just because I know those really well. Okay. All right. So let me just talk a little bit about blueberries. 
Um, again, we consider blueberries to be this culinary ingredient, but they are an incredible medicine. Um, we have two primary kinds that grow in Minnesota. Um, of course, people have planted other kinds, but the two primary ones that grow wild are the low bush blueberry that grows down toward the ground. Um, and, uh, you know, is, the leaves are kind of shiny and waxy looking. Um, the other, uh, thanks Ray for, for looking that up and, and figuring that out. Appreciate that. Um, the, uh, the other type is the one that's kind of fuzzy. Can you guys see the difference between those two species? Between the blueberry that's the angustifolium and the blueberry that's the myrtaloides, right? Do you see that the one on the right hand side has fuzzy stems and even the leaves are fuzzy, okay? So it's called velvet leaf blueberry. So if, you, if you've seen them and you just all thought that they were blueberries that look different from each other, now you know. They're two separate species. <laughs> and, um, and they're actually, they, they do overlap a lot as far as their distribution. You can see those maps there uh, where they grow. The velvet leaf um, is a lot more common and even grows way, way up into Nunavut territory, okay? So uh, these Minan in, in Ojibwe or Hazato in, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Hazato in um, Dakota, uh, and, uh, you know, very super duper crazy high in antioxidants. So if you know, you, you guys have probably heard that blueberries are great for people with cancer, um, and that's actually very true, and there's really good literature to support that, because um, the, uh, the antioxidant levels in them help to destroy free radicals, which will stop um, uh, healthy cells from turning into cancer cells, I guess, put it simply. Um, so yeah, very high in antioxidants, um, you know, really good for you. Very uh, uh, soothing to the throat and other tissues, very good lung support, um, uh, you know, full, full of all kinds of vitamins and nutrients. Uh, blueberries are um, uh, not just great for coughs, but, but they're good for making your lungs strong as well, okay? All right, so let's get started. Let me post this recipe here, and I'm going to kind of get started um, because I have my boiling water here right next to me in my kettle. So um, in my little, uh, my smaller little saucepan here, um, I have about two tablespoons of cedar, okay? Now, what happens if you wanna use a little more cedar? Go ahead, that's up to you. <laughs> what happens if you don't wanna use cedar at all and you wanna use jun uh, uh, juniper berries? That's fine too. What happens if you are sensitive to thujone and you don't wanna use those at all? That's fine. I will actually talk about all kinds of other things you can use. Um, do any of you guys have any fresh ginger or even dried ginger root with you? or even the wild ginger. Um, if you guys have that, you can use that in this recipe instead of cedar, okay? If you, um, if you don't want to use that, feel, feel free to. Oh, great, oh, sis, so Esther is asking a fantastic question that I forgot to address, thank you. Um, so let's go back to the blueberry just for a second because um, my friend Esther asked a fantastic question. Are we just using the berries? What about the leaves, okay? So I had meant to tell you guys that never ever, if you accidentally pull a, um, a small branch or some leaves off of your blueberry bush that you're, that you're harvesting, don't ever throw those away. Blueberry leaf tea is fantastic medicine. It is actually, um, so I've been having trouble lately with my vision. As I get older, <laughs> I'm having trouble with cataracts. And blueberry leaf tea is fantastic for um, eye health, the health of your eyes, okay? So if you, um, you know, have some access, or, or let's say you missed blueberry season, and oh my gosh, all the blueberries are gone, you know? You actually can sustainably harvest some of the leaves and use those for tea. And blueberry leaf tea tastes wonderful. It has a really mild blueberry flavor, but you'll also be getting all of that gorgeous medicine. So if you don't have blueberries, please, please use blueberry leaves if you have them or any of the other blueberry relatives 
um, uh, uh, you know, uh, like the um, huckleberries. You could use huckleberries and you can use huckleberry leaves, okay? The blueberry and the huckleberry are also um, medicines that I've been using a lot during COVID because of their abilities, in even the leaves, the leaves and the berries, because of their abilities to heal blood vessels, you guys, okay? So you know how COVID has been damaging blood vessels in the lungs? Blueberries, huckleberries, and their leaves are wonderful at repairing blood vessels, okay? So absolutely use those. Thanks for reminding me of that, Esther. Um, okay, so I have my boiling water here. I have my cedar in the pot, about two tablespoons, okay? So I'm just gonna open my kettle for my boiling water. I, it's, it's a cup of boiling water. I'm not measuring, but you can. <laughs> um, a cup, about a cup of boiling water onto my cedar. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a couple of minutes, okay? Um, probably about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna strain it, okay? So we are at this point, um, do all of you, if you're not using cedar, you can use ginger, you can use mint, you can use, um, I, mean, there, I just have all kinds of stuff that I'll talk about here in a second. I'll come back to this recipe, um, but I wanted to, to talk to you about that for just a second. If you, um, dear, do you know where the fresh ginger is? Uh, we don't have any, we have dry ginger right If you get a chance, come over and get it for me because I don't see it. Okay, so, um, I wanted to say that if you don't want to use cedar, you can use mint, okay? And it, mint is also wonderful lung support, has great medicine in it. It's more, uh, it, it doesn't have any thujone in it, um, you know, so it's very safe. I feel like it doesn't pack the punch, uh, the cough medicine punch that, that cedar has, but I do use mint in all of my lung uh, uh, tea blends. You know, so like during the past couple of years, if people tell me they have a cough, if they tell me they have asthma and they want to protect their lungs, I put mint into all of those tea blends, okay? Uh, so very, very um, safe, right? Uh, so, so feel free to use mint and you can use any type of mint, okay? So like here, I have a beautiful jar of bee balm, pickle jar. <laughs> I have a beautiful jar of bee balm. This is that Monarda or bee balm that has the purple flower at the top um, uh, that of course grows out there in Minnesota as well. Beautiful smell and also very good safe lung support. Also the bee balm is very antimicrobial, right? What does that mean? That means it's going to help to prevent infection. So if you're someone who gets a cough, like my 18 year old son PZ, Anytime he gets a cough, it turns into pneumonia. It turns into a lung infection. Oh, it drives me crazy. So I give him a lot of bee balm uh, when, when I notice him start to cough in order to prevent that infection. Bee balm, okay? So uh, you could use that instead of cedar. Or you guys, you can use these, any of these plants I'm going to talk about, you can use them in addition to the cedar if you want, okay? Um, and Chelsea is asking if you use the cedar leaves fr uh, fresh or dried, either one. Uh, remember that very often dried cedar leaves are stronger than fresh, okay? Because these fresh cedar leaves like I have here still have like some water in them, right? So the medicine is a little bit more diluted. Um, so, uh, you know, when, when it comes to cedar and like pine and spruce, it's not all that significant. So you can use, um, um, uh, you know, dried or fresh for that. Okay. And, and absolutely use your dried cedar. You know, sometimes, um, the cedar that, that we have, like we'll have some left and it gets super dry. And that's what we use to like make a lot of you know, salves and syrups and things like that because, um, you know, we want to start using it and then we'll get some more fresh cedar to keep around. So, so, okay. So you can use any type of mint in this recipe as well. Very good lung support. Great for keeping your lungs strong. And remember the mints are very good for headaches. Okay. So if you know someone who has maybe had issues with like headaches, uh, uh, you know, maybe they had COVID and, and they're still getting the headaches. Maybe they have some inflammation, um, uh, you know, um, and that's causing migraines. 
Mint is wonderful. You can use mint essential oil, but also mint tea. Okay, so not only great lung support, but great for headaches and, and migraines. Um, you can use plantain, you know, omaka kibig. Uh, this is so, so common. And there are numerous types of plantain around. Uh, there's the narrow leaf plantain, and then there's this in this photo, the broad leaf plantain, okay? Now, <clears throat> I love putting plantain into all of my um, lung support teas, my cough, cough medicines. Um, I don't know how many of you guys are from Germany or maybe you've lived there, but um, when I was in Germany, a friend of mine had me go to a pharmacy to get cough medicine for her. And I just happened to be looking at all of the cough medicines. Every single one of them had plantain in it. You, you can't buy cough syrup in Germany that doesn't have plantain in it. And, and let me just... Let me, just in case some of you guys um, don't know, this is not the same thing as like the green banana thing that you fry up, <laughs> right? That our, our friends to the South love to cut up and fry, uh, delicious, but not the same thing at all. I don't know why they have the same English names. Again, English names for plants are kind of weird. So um, when we talk about this one, sometimes it's better to use the indigenous name like Omaka Kibug uh, frog leaf. And I know I don't speak Ojibwe well, but I'm trying. <laughs> so, um, uh, but you know, beautiful medicine. Plantain is so um, like soothing, right? It's very soothing. Like if you have a really um, sore throat, bad cough that's starting to irritate your lungs and breathing passages, plantain is a great one to add to this cough syrup, okay? Um, I just wanted to show you also, you know, the plantain salve. Um, so Marilyn is, uh, brings up a great point. I'm, I'm glad um, to address this. Some people in, the, in English, they call this plant the white man's footprint. Sometimes I almost find that insulting because it implies that this plant is not indigenous, and it is. It is very indigenous. This particular spe species, Plantago regalii, which is in the bottom left there, that is a native, uh, native plantain. The one in the top right, I'd have to look really close, but, but look, uh, everyone watch where my little pointer arrow is. If you look down here um, and it has purple at the base of the leaf, it is the native species. That's why this one might be Plantago major. Still has the same medicine, still very medicinal. The non-native one is, but um, you know, I always, I always like to find the native species and kind of spread the seeds around and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so plantain is a native plant, an indigenous plant, and, and really good indigenous medicine, okay? Great for salves, great for cough medicine, uh, great you know, in salads and soups and things like that. Uh, love it, wonderful medicine. And, and you can definitely add it to this as well. Um, I also add bear root to a lot of mine. Now, I know that like, um, you know, uh, mukwajibic uh, bear root is, is a wonderful medicine for, for everyone. It is very sensitive, okay? I wanted to talk about it because I know a lot of you all, um, you know, use bear root. It can absolutely go into this cough medicine. It, um, you know, bear root, you know, it, in this cough medicine, Sometimes if I have a cough and I take one spoonful of this cough medicine, uh, it will clear my cough up after one dose. One dose, you guys. I mean, it's really an amazing recipe. Um, bear root is not the same thing as Angelica. They are very closely related. Um, this grows in the mountains up at about 6,000 feet. I do also, Jessica, I like to use Angelica root because it's a lot more common. Bear root is actually very sensitive to overharvesting. So I always say that if you're not indigenous and you really wanna use good medicine, but still leave indigenous medicine for indigenous people, use Angelica, because it's a great substitute with many of the same um, uh, medicinal properties. So the purple stem uh, uh, of the, of, that's of Angelica, right? Rachel is, is what you're saying. The purple stemmed the, the, of the angelica is indigenous. Oh, oh, of the plantain. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> yep. Um, 
because there is a purple stemmed Angelica too. So, <laughs> um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, Angelica is a wonderful uh, plant and, and it is used ceremonially. It's another one. It's not as sensitive to over harvesting out here um, and in Minnesota, but always, you know, very good idea. And, and you guys, with any of these plants, make sure to follow the protocols that were put in place by the people who came before you. You know, maybe it's, you know, protocols for sustainability, only harvesting a couple. Maybe it's protocols for, for like singing, saying prayers, offering your asema, your tobacco. Uh, follow those protocols for, for all of these. If you are not indigenous, follow the protocols of the people whose land you're on. Okay, and make sure to ask permission and talk to them first. So, um, but bear root is another one that's fantastic to add to this. Okay, I use um, uh, bear root a lot in this recipe. Okay, and you can powder it and uh, put it in here too, and, um, or just grind it up. It's up to you. Um, another plant that you can use in here um, is um, gum weed. I'm sorry, that picture on the left got really blurry. <laughs> but I did, I guess I just wanted to show you that it kind of grows as like, it almost looks like a small bush or a shrub, right? And Missy, you guys have this growing all over uh, near you. And thanks for saying that. Yes, that's exactly what we were taught too, is that praying, asking for help, asking for help from that plant, communicating with that plant. So important, right? Plants speak to us. You know, we just have to be respectful enough to ask and talk to them uh, because they are our relatives, they are sentient, uh, and, and you know, they, they feel, they communicate, and it's, it's so important to do that. But, but this plant here uh, is, is so, so common. Out here in the Dakotas, it grows on the roadsides, and, you know, people think of it as a weed, right? But it is a wonderful medicine for lungs. And um, if you are someone who suffers from chronic lung issues, like I do, I suffer from asthma, uh, you can actually make a gumweed tincture, and it's fantastic. You can use it every day to strengthen your lungs. Or, do you guys see why it's called gumweed? Look, look here uh, where my little pointer is. Do you see this, like, sticky resin that's all over the, the flowers? These are the flower buds. And then they'll open up and look like this beautiful yellow flower here. But um, this, this sticky resin is wonderful for lungs, for strengthening the lungs and for clearing them out. So if you suffer from a sinus infection, if you suffer from congestion in your lungs, this is the like, great medicine for you, the gumweed. And I've found it you know, all over out there in Minnesota. Um, uh, you know, everywhere from Red Lake to Leech Lake, you know, Mille Lacs and, and way further south to Lower Sioux and Upper Sioux. It's uh, wonderful medicine. And, and there are a couple of different species of Grindelia or gumweed that grow here and um, in, in what's now the United States. And they're all uh, wonderfully medicinal. So this is another one, you know, you can use it with the cedar or you could use it instead of the cedar. Okay. Um, yep, so, oh, yeah, um, my sis Sienna is asking about uh, lomatium glycerate or, or tincture. Let me, uh, well, I, I won't go back, sis, but, but um, let, me, let me talk about that for just a second. Alice, yes, gumweed does grow up in BC. Um, it grows, like, on the edges of the, the roads and the forest, like, in meadows, and in meadows. So, so Sienna, let me, um, go back to bare root for a second, okay? Because Sian was just asking about lomatium, okay? Lomatium is another word for what a lot of people call the biscuit root family, okay? Lomatium is closely related to bare root, okay? Um, and, and, and it has very much a lot of the same medicinal properties, sis. Uh, it is like such, like so great. We, we use lomatium, lomatium glycerate and lomatium tincture in our family as well. Uh, and it's really, really good lung support. I don't know if that's why um, he got it for you, but it's, you know, really, really good. And um, yeah. Oh, and, and um, Sian, I did see up above where you asked if you could use dried plantain. Absolutely, you can use dried or fresh plantain, okay? 
Um, but yeah, that look like if, if you guys had lomatium or biscuit root, um, what, what, what else do they call it up there? They, there's another name for lomatium up like in Montana. Um, they, they have one, uh, oh, it's, they, some people call it bitter root instead of the bitter root that we have in the wetlands out here. Um, like not, not the sinkbe tawote sien, uh, but lomatium has a root like this, and it looks a lot like this bare root, okay? I wish I could turn my camera around so that you guys could see my husband trying to make me laugh by like dancing around and acting crazy. Okay, another plant that you can use um, instead of cedar or in addition to cedar is mullen. Now, let me talk about mullen for a second. It is not native. Okay, it comes from over like in um, Asia, but it is wonderful medicine. And I know a lot of indigenous people use it. And I think that that's wonderful because it is an invasive plant. And um, you know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in like, hey, let's use all of these invasive plants, protect other native species <laughs> and still get good medicine. Because if you've ever used mullen for lung issues, for coughs, you know, that this is excellent medicine, right? But let me just give a word of caution. As someone with asthma and as someone who's very sensitive, um, like uh, do any of you guys eat pineapple and, and the pineapple irritates the inside of your mouth and your throat? I'm, I, I'm like allergic to, to pineapple if I don't get all of the brown stuff off the sides, okay? Um, I have to really, really peel my pineapple carefully. It's the same way with mullen for me, okay? I have to filter mullen through two coffee filters. I have to, if I make the tea, I have to filter it through two coffee filters and make sure I get all of those little hairs out. Do you see how the, hair, the, the leaves are covered in like tiny fuzz and tiny hairs? I'm very sens sensitive to that and it, I, it's very itchy for me. <clears throat> and it'll actually make me cough more and irritate my lungs. So I just have to be very careful um, to, to filter it out very well. Marilyn is asking if you can use mullen safely for little kids. Um, I've used mullen for kids as young as four. Um, the, the problem is when they're younger than that, you don't know how sensitive they are to it. And you don't know how well someone else filtered it. Okay, so if like you're buying something from the health food store, even a tincture or a glycerate, you don't know, you know? And so I would say that's probably why they say it's not safe for kids, but I've personally, like I, I've used it for kids as young as four very regularly. I just make sure that I um, filter it really well. And um, yes, <laughs> no, it, it's true. So, so Chelsea, it's funny that you say that. Chelsea's saying to be careful if you use this as toilet paper, if you're allergic to the hairs. Um, but some people do call this, uh, you know, toilet paper plant and things like that. Uh, James is saying that mullen tea really helped to clear up his puppy's uh, respiratory infection when antibiotics failed. That's great info, James, because it's true. I've even heard of people using mullen tea for horses with respiratory issues. So it's great medicine for everyone. Um, awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for, for sharing and, and keep, keep sharing those. But you can use mullen in this recipe as well, okay? Just make sure that you, um, if you're gonna make the mullen tea first, filter it extremely well, okay? Um, okay, so let me go back to, um, back to the recipe here. Um, if you guys have any questions on any of the plants that I talked about, please feel free to, to let me know. Can you, did you get that um, ginger for me? Oh, no. Yeah, no, it's okay. Thank you for doing that. Okay, I just wanna show you guys because, um, okay, think about herbs that you guys really, you know, maybe aren't indigenous, maybe aren't native, but that are really um, great to use. Like if you have some leftover ginger, like, like look at this, okay? We buy a lot of fresh ginger because we cook with it. Yeah, um, uh, we make a lot of stir fries and things like that. My mom is Asian, so we use ginger a lot. This is um, ginger, this was fresh ginger, right? 
beautiful fresh ginger a, a few weeks ago, um, but we left it out and it's kind of dried up like this. You see that? So, um, you know, we have this leftover dried ginger that we're not going to use in our, um, uh, in, in, in our stir fries. So, uh, all, you know, I could throw this, like chop it up or, or break it up and throw this in with my cedar if I want it, right? You can, you can do that. If you love garlic and you don't mind the garlic flavor mixed with the sweetness of the honey and the blueberries, garlic is so antimicrobial. And, and you guys, this cough syrup, if you added some garlic to it and the ginger and stuff, you could even use it for strep throat because that would be so wonderfully antibiotic, you know, uh, antibacterial uh, and even antiviral, and it would really help with that, okay? Same thing goes with that bee balm I was talking about earlier, okay? And if you were going to add those things, um, uh, Marina is asking if you add dried plantain with the cedar for tea or make it into a powder first. That's really up to you, but any of those things, like whether it's ginger or garlic or mint, I would probably add it right here to my cedar and let it steep for a while and then strain it, okay? Um, okay, so um, uh, let, me, let me continue with this. So, okay, I've had my beautiful cedar tea. Oh my gosh, smells amazing. Steeping in this hot water for a while, okay? If you wanted to make this a lot stronger, you could. I, I um, am fine with it, you know, being like this. So I have a bowl and a little strainer here. If you're cooking along with me, I'll try to, try to let you. If you don't have a little strainer, okay, like a little mesh strainer like this, use an old t-shirt. Use a towel. Use um, coffee filter, right? Whatever, whatever you have, go ahead and use, okay? But I'm going to pour my cedar tea through the strainer, okay? Beautiful, about, about a cup of cedar tea, okay? And then I'm going to prep my blueberries, okay? So I have a ninja here <laughs> next to me, okay? Be very careful, super sharp. You can use a blender, or if you don't want to, if you don't want to blend your blueberries up that much, you can just use like a mortar and pestle, you know? Take some of your blueberries on your, your stones and then grind your blueberries up, okay? And you can, you can do that that way. That's totally fine. You don't have to use a ninja. Um, you know, you guys, my mom, um, when she's making medicine, she will not let metal touch her stuff. She, she will even make her um, syrup in like a clay pot or a, a, what's that stuff called? Like, like this enamel an enamel pot or glass. She won't let metal touch any of her stuff, okay? Here's my Ninja. I'm gonna pour my blueberries into my Ninja cup here. I have one cup, one cup of blueberries here um, that I'm gonna uh, puree up. And um, I'll show you why I'm doing that in just a second, in case you don't know, but I want, right? So I have my blueberries on here. Now this is gonna get super loud, so I'm gonna um, turn it on. Oh. Honey, can you plug that in? Uh, I'm gonna uh, puree these for just a second and, and it's super duper loud. So I'm gonna, is it plugged in? And so I'm gonna mute you just for one second, okay? So you're gonna see me sitting here looking crazy because I'm gonna um, mute myself. Okay, <laughs> so I pureed my blueberries, okay? Again, if you have blackberries, if you have raspberries, raspberries are amazing for coughs. If you have, um, you know, cherries, choke cherries, if you have wild plums, oh my gosh, you guys, wild plums and wild plum twigs would be, would the, you could use the wild plums as the puree, but you could use the wild plum twigs in your tea. Uh, uh, that's a really good old traditional lung medicine for coughs, okay? So um, I have my pureed blueberries here. Now, what do you guys wanna do? 
Do you want to puree the solids from your blueberries out and make your cough syrup silky and smooth? Or do you want to keep the, you know, not waste any of it and keep the solids in there? That's up to you and your kids. <laughs> because the thing is, is my um, six-year-old, like if, if, if I don't, puree, uh, I'm sorry, if I don't filter out the solids, he says the little pieces of the blueberry get stuck in his teeth and his throat. So I'm just gonna pour my blueberry puree through this cool little strainer here. See this? Okay, that's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna um, speed it up by taking, you know, part of a wooden spoon. You can, you can do the, this part of a wooden spoon or, you know, this end, that's up to you. But I'm just gonna strain that through there into my cedar tea, okay? Um, again, you don't have to filter out the solids, okay? Yeah, um, James, I thought, I thought so too. Um, I thought maybe she was talking about comfrey because plantain isn't really a bone knitting herb, Alice. Um, so Alice asked if uh, she had heard that plantain was good for um, broken bones. I've never heard that. Plantain is really wonderful for skin and wonderful for lungs, you know? So if you think of plantain, you can think of, think of that. Okay, so I'm just, can you guys see that drip, drip, dripping? Just straining my blueberries into my cedar tea. Okay. Just gonna pour a little more, pour a little more through here. I, I don't like to waste any of it. So I'll, I'll show you guys first in a second what you can do with your blueberry solids if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to have them in your cough medicine. Okay, so can you guys see? I'm just kind of making sure I get all the good blueberry essence and puree into my, into my cough syrup. Okay, so let me just show you. I do have some blueberry, like this is like mostly the peelings here. So first of all, this is delicious. It even smells amazing. <laughs> um, and I don't want to waste it. So I could turn this into blueberry leather, like for my kids, add a little bit of honey um, uh, and, and lay it out to dry, like in a dehydrator and make blueberry leather with that. Okay. I, I won't waste it. I'll probably just in, end up eating it with a spoon, <laughs> but um, you know, you could do anything with that. Okay. But in this bowl, I have my cedar tea and my blueberry puree. That's all I have in here, okay? And now I'm going to add half of a cup of honey. You guys, we're almost done with it here. Like think about how easy that is. I made cedar tea, I mixed it with blueberry puree. That's all I've done so far, okay? And now I'm adding honey. I was given this really bougie honey last Christmas as a Christmas gift, <laughs> so I'm gonna use that. Um, but I, I don't want you guys to think that you have to use bougie expensive honey. If you know, uh, the, the thing is that you want to try to do is make sure that you're using raw honey. Okay. Um, raw unfiltered honey is, uh, is a lot better than pasteurized honey, but you can't use honey for a child under the age of one just because of the threat of botulism. Okay. So, um, uh, but, but you know, the, you guys, did you have, and, okay, I want to challenge you guys, okay? So next time you go into the grocery store, make sure that you look at the label on the honey that you're getting. Just because it says honey does not mean it's pure honey. And it sure doesn't mean it's raw honey, okay? Pure honey, um, it should be 100% honey. If you guys see cheap honey in the shape of a bear, but it's only like a dollar, it probably has corn syrup in it. They're doing that. Um, local Lakota made elderberry with raw honey, okay? Oh yeah, beautiful. Yep, um, absolutely misty. Um, uh, and, and the thing is, here, here's, here's another thing, okay? So I have my warm cedar tea here, and I've added my blueberry puree here, right? Um, right here, I'm adding my, my honey, like let's say you were adding raw honey. Um, it would be 
you know, the warmth of the, the tea would probably be enough to like make it totally safe. But, you know, just in case, okay? So um, what's in this bowl, you guys, okay? I want you to think about what's in this bowl, how easy this is, because I don't want you to think it's tough. I made cedar tea, I pureed some blueberries and added those, and then I just now added honey. That's all that's in here, okay? Three ingredients in this bowl, and I could stop now. Now I'm just stirring to kind of melt the honey into my cedar tea blueberry puree, okay? That's all I'm doing, okay? Any, any questions on this? I just wanna make sure. If you're looking for local honey or if you're looking for honey that's produced by indigenous people, um, there's quite a few places. We really love to support Marla Bull Bear down on uh, the Rosebud Reservation. She um, has a group of kids who, had a, who have um, beehives, and they, yes, yeah, Sian, thank you, Honey Lodge, um, out, out of Milk's Camp um, on uh, Rosebud, Sichangu territory. Uh, they have wonderful honey. If any of you guys know of any other indigenous honey producers, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, yeah, but the Lakota Honey Lodge, oh my gosh, their honey is absolutely amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna say it for like a fifth time. In this bowl, I have cedar tea, blueberry puree, and honey. That's it, okay? Now, did I measure? No, but I provided you guys with measurements because I know it makes people feel more comfortable. Um, I just kind of eyeball it. Where's that lemon, dear? Um, I provide people with measurements. Can you cut it in half for me? Um, because it makes people feel more comfortable. But, you know, I just kind of eyeball it, and that's totally fine. You guys do whatever you need to do. Um, this is a, a tried and true recipe that I, I put up here for you. Okay, and now I have a lemon, okay? And I'm just going to squeeze my lemon into here. Lemons are not indigenous, um, but they are wonderful medicine. Uh, they're so super high in vitamin C, which is wonderful for coughs, um, wonderful for sore throats. Not great if you get it in your eye like I just did. <laughs> um, Okay, so let me just show you. Taking the other half of my lemon, just squeezing it right into the bowl, okay? So there's our fourth ingredient. I have my cedar tea, my pureed blueberries, my honey, and my lemon juice. I'm oh, not you, different honey. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm just gonna stir it together, okay? Then I'm going to take my strainer and just kind of filter it again, just because I got some lemon seeds in there. And I want, to, I want you guys to see how cool this is. <laughs> okay, it's not super thick. If I wanted to cook it down and make it thicker, I could. But you guys, right there, this. That's the stuff. You can use um, a tablespoon every hour. I'm going to just... Oh my God. <laughs> I could just drink that, you guys. It's delicious. It's, that's a beautiful tea. Like, right? It's kind of a cross between a tea and a, a syrup. You can make it thicker if you want. You can do about a tablespoon per hour while you have a cough. Um, this will also boost the immune system and make your lungs healthy. So if you wanted to do, you know, um, a, a you know, two tablespoons every night, you could do that as well. Um, the lemons are not indigenous, but they are full of vitamin C. If you don't want to use them, that's fine. But the lemon juice does act as a preservative, okay? So I do like to use it. Plus it adds, like it makes it taste even better because honestly, this kind of tastes like blueberry lemonade, y'all, right? So it's pretty good. Um, Stephanie's asking, uh, can you repeat how we can get this stuff from Milk's Camp? Sure. So, so just go, um, Cian, do you have one second to put the Honey Lodge link, um, uh, the website up, if you, if you just have one second? Um, uh, if she can't, then I can send it to you, Steph. Um, so um, I want to make sure I get these questions. Oh, thank you, dear. Thank you so, so much. So Stephanie, do you see that? Um, she posted that. Okay, so you can use about a tablespoon. I answered that. Um, can you repeat? Okay, is it okay to cook down? How long does it keep? Okay, great. Messiah is asking. So um, 
cook it down and let it get really super thick? Yes, you can, but Maziah, let me say that you don't want to cook the honey, especially if you're using good raw honey, okay? Raw honey is its own medicine, all right? Let me, um, you know what, let me uh, stop my share here so I can talk to you guys about something real quick because this is so important, okay? Um, if you're going to cook this down and you want it to be thicker, make sure to cook your cedar tea down with the blueberry puree and let that get thicker, okay? Or use less water, use less of the, the tea, okay? And uh, if you want it to be thicker. The reason I say that is because you don't wanna cook the honey. It's medicine all by itself, especially raw honey. It has all these really wonderful uh, things in it um, that, that will boost your immune system. They're great for your gut microbiome, your gut health. Okay. And even like, I, I was just talking to a diabetes coordinator um, who is a registered dietitian and specializes, I mean, she's written papers on diabetes nutrition. And she was saying that she actually recommends small amounts of honey for her patients because honey is so, so good for you. Such a great medicine. Okay. And you guys, for my, for my um, Anishinaabe friends who have sugar bush, don't forget about how beautifully medicinal maple syrup is. I could have used maple syrup in here instead of honey if I wanted, okay? Now, I personally don't get the um, relief from coughs from maple syrup that I get from honey. That's just me. Some people do. So the other thing you could do is if you wanted to use part, like a quarter cup of maple syrup and a quarter cup of honey, you could do that as well. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say, Esther, um, assist, if you're still on here, um, my, my dear sister friend Esther did an amazing workshop on um, fire cider. And this, um, this cough syrup would be fantastic used in conjunction with her fire cider to boost the immune system. If you don't know what fire cider is, uh, um, I'm sure that Rachel recorded it. it recorded it did it <laughs> and um has the video so please try to um get a link to that rachel maybe if people request it from you you could send it out um because that uh will be a fantastic combination uh with this syrup the last thing i want to say is okay we're making real what i call real cough syrup here we're making natural cough syrup without uh, the stuff, the active ingredient that is in the over-the-counter cough syrup. What is in over-the-counter cough syrup? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna type it in the chat just so you guys can. Um, H A N. Did I spell it right? Yes, I did. Okay, dextromethorphan is the active ingredient in over-the-counter cough medicine. Okay, please, please, if you guys don't remember anything else I said today, if you if you're like, eh. Her, you know, that cough syrup sounds terrible or something like that's fine. But please, if you do nothing else, do not ever use over-the-counter cough medicine that contains dextromethorphan. It is really, I, I cannot believe that that stuff still has FDA approval. Um, dextromethorphan, you know, why does over-the-counter cough syrup work? Over-the-counter cough syrup works not because it's, it's soothing, not because it's helping to heal you. It does nothing to help heal you. Over-the-counter cough syrup works because it's actually a hallucinogen um, called a disassociative. It acts on your brain and it dampens this, the, the receptors in your brain that make you think you have to cough. That's all it does, you guys. It literally acts on your brain to make you think you don't have to cough, okay? Unfortunately, one of the terrible side effects of over-the-counter cough syrup is that it also dampens your ability to feel emotion, right? Isn't that horrible? Do you guys remember that we used to give this to kids, over-the-counter cough medicine like Dimetap and Robitussin? We used to give that to kids. Now it's being used as a, um, as, as a, a street drug because it's a hallucinogen and, and, it, and you just, like, have you ever seen kids on it? You know, they just sit there kind of like this. It's because they can't feel it. Literally that part of their brain has been dampened so that they can't feel. So here's the interesting part. Numerous clinical trials have shown that plain honey 
works better to control a cough than over-the-counter cough syrup. Plain honey. So can you imagine? We have honey with the blueberries, with the cedar, with the lemon juice. You know, maybe you put some mint in there. Maybe you put some bear root or lomatium in there. Um, you know, when you make your own, you, you have this beautiful combination that is not only helping to control a cough, but it's also healing you, right? So, um, oh yes, Sian, me too, me too. Uh, uh, we stopped using over-the-counter cough syrup. I, I mean, I think before I even had kids, I don't think my kids have ever had it, but um, I just wanted to make sure if I missed, okay. So what's a safe and appropriate dosage for kids? Lori is asking of our blueberry cough syrup. So um, I have a six-year-old and I give him basically a teaspoonful at a time. The other thing is, is that you guys see this? You can put this in a cup or a jar or a bowl and put it next to the, your kid's bed if they have a cough. And anytime, like at night, if they wake up and they're um, coughing, just have them take a spoonful of it and go back to bed. It'll really, it'll, it'll help them rest as well because it'll help to soothe, um, soothe that cough and calm, calm the, those tissues down. Um, so I would say like a teaspoonful a few times a day is a safe dosage for kids over five, okay? If you have a kid who's sensitive to Thujone, um, and how do you know that? You only know that if you've used Thujone with them before or they've drank cedar tea and you know maybe start to, started to feel nauseous or something or gotten a headache. So, um, uh, but if you don't know and you want to, just you can use mint or something like that instead. But I know a lot of kids who drink a lot of cedar tea. And like, for example, um, you know, it, I'm being, I, I hope you guys realize that as someone who's here on Zoom teaching, um, I have to be overly cautious, okay? So like if you go to, you know, um, Sean Sherman's restaurant over in Minneapolis to Owamini, you know, he serves maple cedar tea just as a matter of course, and kids are drinking it, grownups are drinking it, everything, you know? So, uh, but, but I, I have to be really careful and cautious because I don't want you guys to, to hurt yourself, right? Um, so let me see, how long does the syrup keep? Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> if, if I were to put this in a, in a tightly sealed jar and leave it on my kitchen counter, in about a couple weeks, it might explode because <laughs> it's going to ferment on the kitchen counter. So be very careful. But put it in the fridge and it will last for months and months. Okay, if you want to keep it on your kitchen counter and, and you want to let it ferment a little, that's fine too. But do not put a tight fitting lid on there. Loose fitting lid, okay? Don't, don't put a tight fitting lid on there. But, but in the fridge, it will keep for months and months. Um, uh, as long as it doesn't have mold on it, um, and just so you know, I would just spoon the mold off and still use it personally, but don't do that. <laughs> Uh, but if it has mold on it, that's how you know it's gone bad, right? Um, I uh, do not use the cedar bark. I only use the cedar leaves. Any suggestions on testing sensitivity to cedar before trying the syrup? You could try some cedar tea, um, is Chelsea, is my suggestion, is, is trying some cedar tea first and, and seeing how they feel. Um, and then, of course, you know, you could see if other people in the family um, are sensitive to it. Let's see, cedar tea mix. Um, sorry. Oh, uh, yep. She, I think she did. Let's see. <laughs> Not all mushrooms are edible. Don't say that, James. <laughs> no, <laughs> we, we, we say that sometimes in our house too. Everything is edible once, <laughs> right? Okay, um, I, I think I got all the questions. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble kind of scrolling through the chat. So if you have a question that I haven't answered, feel free to, to put it in the chat again. Um, Rachel, any, anything that you'd like me to cover? Yeah, Athena, uh, yes, Eastern Red Cedar, you can use juniper leaves or juniper berries, and it is a fantastic cedar substitute, okay? Any, any other questions, comments? Wondering if you could repeat how to take the medicine. Yep, so, um, yep, absolutely. So uh, for, if, it, if it's me, I do about a tablespoon every hour um, uh, while I'm sick, while I have a cough, or whenever I start to have a coughing fit, you know, just do about a tablespoon. Um, 
if it's for a kid, I would lessen that to about a teaspoon, okay? Um, and if you, if you wanna use less, like let's say, you know, it's an elder and they don't want to take a whole tablespoon of this, uh, they absolutely could just start off with a teaspoon as well. Um, they're, they're still gonna get beautiful medicinal benefits from it, okay? Got done in an hour, woo woo. <laughs> an hour anyway. Is there a certain reason you steeped the cedar as opposed to boiling the cedar? Oh, that was actually another question. Someone asked why my mom doesn't use metal in her medicine. Um, in my mom's traditions, she um, has been taught that metal reacts with a lot of different medicinal compounds, and that's why she doesn't use any metal. She doesn't even stir her stuff with a metal spoon. Um, and that goes back to your question is like, why don't I boil the cedar? Um, I feel like steeping the cedar gets um, a more gentle medicine out of it. If you really want a strong cedar, you can boil it. I just, you know, I've always been taught that steeping it slowly. Um, yes, exactly, Misty. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, oh, oh, Misty, thanks for saying that. So, so Misty said um, that uh, the black pan stuff, Teflon, like the nonstick coating, let's talk about that for just a second, you guys. Do not use uh, things with a nonstick coating. This is enamel, which is why it's you know stained on the bottom from years of, of cooking medicine in here, uh, elderberry elixir and all kinds of stuff. Um, but they, you know, those things don't react with enamel, right? Uh, use stainless steel, use glass, do not use aluminum and do not use anything with a nonstick coating. Um, I was actually telling this story on a workshop yesterday. Do, have you guys ever heard the story about the dude with, um, he was cooking medicine with a pirate on a parrot, <laughs> with a parrot on his shoulder? I know it sounds like a pirate story, but this is a totally true story. There was a guy who was stir frying stuff in a pan and he had his pet parrot sitting on his shoulder and he was using a nonstick pan. And after a couple of minutes, um, the parrot, it's, it's kind of, it sounds funny, I know, but it's terrible. His parrot died. It fell off his shoulder and died. And what they found out is that the fumes given off by Teflon, by that nonstick coating, are very toxic and actually really toxic even for people but you know, it's kind of like that canary in the coal mine thing. The parrot, of course, had a um, stronger dose of it and ended up dying. So um, don't use things with a nonstick coating if you can avoid it, okay? Um, Terry, I don't know if you were on earlier when I was talking about, um, Terry's asking about herbs for pregnant women. Absolutely, I alter it because I don't use cedar for pregnant women, okay? Um, so if you, if you um, go back, you'll see that I say that I wouldn't give this to pregnant women just because it has cedar in it. And then um, Martina, hi, uh, I came in a little late. Did you use fresh cedar or dried? You can use either. I used fresh cedar just because it was growing at Sitting Bull College, or, um, United Tribes Technical College. <laughs> um, uh, but, but absolutely. And then uh, Viva's asking about cast iron. Yes, you can. Um, with keeping in mind that I, I use cast iron for like everything pretty much, um, except most medicine making, just because I cook it for so long in there. Um, and it makes it, gives it that iron taste. Plus all my cast iron is super seasoned. Um, so the medicine that you make in there will have like a coating of grease on the top. So, but you can. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, any, uh, Yep. Um, so Rachel, what I was saying, so Rachel's asking about how tightly to seal the jars. If you're going to leave it sitting out on the counter, do not tightly seal it because it, it will ferment and it'll get bubbly and eventually it'll explode. So just gently or keep it in the fridge. If you keep it in the fridge, it won't ferment. Okay. And it'll keep in the fridge for, for months. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, this is, uh, this, this information does not belong to me. Um, someone taught me, and I hope that you guys will all share it with other people um, as well. I know I saw a question, but I can't, I can't get back to it. <laughs> uh, okay. Any, any questions, comments? Um, just absolutely have had a blast with you guys. 
This has been so fun. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, you guys can find me on Facebook, um, you know, wherever and, and, you know, ask any questions. Thank you guys so much. Rachel, thank you for having me. It's been so uh, great. I, I don't know if I have to ask you to unmute or unmute everybody. I don't even know how to do that, you guys. <laughs> But but okay, I, I will um, go ahead and uh, end. So I will see you guys. Whoopi da, whoopi la, miigwech, gigawabamin. <laughs> oh, you know what, Rachel? I'm actually going to give, just so you can um, take care of the recording, I'm going to give the thing back to you. I'm going to make you host. There. There, Rachel, I made you host again. OK, there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you from us in the classroom. See you guys. Thanks for coming today. <laughs> and over here, too. <laughs> That was wonderful. We'll see you later, Linda. Okay, see you guys. Have a good one. And um, to everyone else who's on here, we just wanted to say thank you on behalf of Four Directions Development and uh, the people of Red Lake here who are enjoying this. So thanks for joining us today. Enjoy your medicine.